So we're going to say a little bit more about returning data from a function. So a function does not have to have a return value. Um, it um, can um, just uh, miss out the return statement, in which case the function carries on running until it runs out of lines of code in the body. So in other words, in that block of code lines that's indented uh, in the def line, if you get to the end of that, then the function just finishes. Um, so here's an example of a function which is like that. So this is a function I've called no return. Again, it takes no input parameters. It prints something out. It then creates a variable xx and sets it equal to 1 plus 2. So I can call that function just by doing no return, brackets, brackets. And what you see is it just prints out um, the line and it doesn't return anything. Um, and even though I'm doing this in a Jupyter Notebook, it doesn't print out any value at the end because there's been nothing returned from that function. Um, so uh, the other thing to notice is that the variable xx that I create inside that function has disappeared after the function finishes. So any variable that you create inside that function is going to get thrown away when the function finishes. The only way to get information out of that function um, is to go and use, is going to return data. Well, nearly the only way. There are a few um, slightly complicated cases which are almost beyond the scope of this module altogether. But essentially, if you work on the principle that the only way to get data out of your function is to return, then um, uh, you'll be you'll be safe. So again, a very one to emphasize is a very important rule that any variables that exist inside a function do not exist outside the function. If you have another variable with the same name, then that will um, exist before you call the function, it'll exist after you call the function, but it won't be changed by anything that happens inside the function. If you try to assign a function that has no return, value to a variable, then what happens is that variable is given the special none value. So if you like, if you don't have a return statement, then Python assumes that there is in fact a line that says return none at the end of the code. So here you can show that. Um, so in this case I'm using the same function that has no return. I try assigning it to a variable yy and when I call that function it said, does the print statement, and then if I say, well, what was yy, it says yy is none. So if you don't have a return statement, then trying assigning your function to anything will make that value none. The other thing you need to be aware of is that when you get to a return line, then the function immediately stops and returns the value back to the calling code, and anything else after that return line is ignored. You can have functions which have more than one return line, more than one return statement, but the way it works is that the first return that it encounters is the one that causes it to stop and give back the answer to the code that called it. So here's an example that simply determines whether a particular number is odd or even. Um, so you see it asks the user for a number and it then says, well, if that number divided by two, what's the remainder? And if that's equal to zero, uh, it must be an even number, so it returns even. Otherwise, well, it has to be an odd number, so it returns odd. And then you see there's another print line after that. And in fact, that final print line will never get executed. So it never will print out, this code is never executed, because there's no way that line can ever be reached. Because either the number is even, in which case we return with the value even, or it's odd, in which case we return with the value odd, and you never get to the print line. Um, so if you try this code out, then it doesn't matter what number you put in there, um, it will always be either even or odd. Um, so finally I want to talk about passing data into a function. Um, so a function is um, essentially doing the same, a function that essentially does the same thing every time. It's not particularly useful um, to have, it's just simply a way of grouping a bit of code into a into a block um, really only gets most useful when you start passing information into functions. So this is done by specifying parameters to the function when you define it. So there's an analogy you're familiar with from maths here. 
So in maths you'd be used to writing something like f of x is equal to say x squared plus sine x, some expression involving x. And you know that you can read um, this as saying that um, f of some value like 2 means to replace x with the argument 2 in the definition of the function and then work out what it was going to give you. So this is basically the same thing with Python. You specify parameters on the def line and then when you call it you give it values that match up to those parameters. So here's an example. We have a function with parameters. So number one, number two. So we've got two parameters uh, and notice again that we don't have to call our things single letters in Python. It's always better practice to give them names which might actually tell you something useful. So this function basically does the same thing as our first function except um, it, rather than just always doing 1 plus 2, it will return number 1 plus number 2. But it also prints out doing a calculation first. So now you can show that it works differently with different input parameters. So I assign xx to the value of calling that function with the parameters 2 and 3. So when that happens, I call the value, call the function, and then number 1 becomes set to 2, and number 2 becomes set to 3. So then when you do number 1 plus number 2, it's doing 2 plus 3, and returns that answer. And you can see it does indeed return 5. And then later on I can call it and set um, uh, yy it's calling the same functions but with different values of parameters in this case 3 and 4 and now it simply returns 7 because it's set number 1 to be 3 and number 2 to be 4 and done that arithmetic. So inside those functions those parameters are just variables and you can use them just like any other variable. The only difference is that they are assigned their values from the arguments when the function is called. So when you call the function, it looks at the arguments you've put in the call and matches them up to the parameters and then sets those parameters equal to those values. When the function finishes, either by calling, either having a return statement or by simply running out of code, then those variables cease to exist. And the, so in our previous example, when the function finishes, number one and number two disappear and you can't get at them any longer. So the rules about when variables exist and when they're available um, to code to, to look at is known as the scope of a variable. And these get quite complicated and they're subtly different between different programming languages. But mostly you can think of functions as entirely self-contained black boxes. So if you need to pass a value into a function and it's not just some constant, then you pass it in via the parameters. If you need to get a value out of a function, then you need to return it with a return statement um, and then assign it when the function is called. You need to assign that return value to a, to a variable outside of the function when, when you're calling it. So if you need to get data in, it's a parameter. If you need to get data out, you need a return. And the only slight exception to that is that if you have values which are constants, then you can um, read them inside the function even though they're not being passed into the parameter in as a parameter so in physics programming quite often we might have say um, some physical constants so things like um, Planck's constant or Boltzmann's constant and we'd be getting a bit clumsy if we're passing those into every single function that needs to use them instead we simply just define um, them as a constant in the code and then the functions can use them um, but for most of your coding, when you've got a value you need to move in or out of a function, pass it in as a parameter and get it out as a return. So in summary, what we've covered, we've briefly defined what a function is, a block of self-contained code that you give a name to. We've talked about how you can call a function to use it. We've talked about how a function uses return to pass back a result from the function, um, back to the code that called it. And we've talked about the function signature, um, the def line, and we've talked a little bit about how to pass code into functions, how to pass values into functions, how to pass data to functions.